you know, people ask me, well, how you doing? I said, well, I'm doing better. I'm six feet above. I'm not six feet below. <laughs> Amen? We're still alive. We're still doing his works. Be blessed. Take his anointing and go forward. Has everybody greeted everyone? We need a minute? Who'd you say hello to, Dale? Everybody? All right. Amen. All right, then let's go. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you that we are alive, alive in Jesus Christ, that you have engrafted us into the vine of the family, Father God. You have saved us from the depths of the miry clay, Father God. You pulled us out. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We can never do enough to show our appreciation, Father. But Lord, one of the things that we can do is say, here I am. Here is the life that you have given me, Father. Use me. Take me. Anoint me. Bless me for your works. That I might go forward, Father, to further your kingdom. Lord, we love you. We are here today to worship you. To lift your name on high. To say you are the only God. And we love you, Lord. Lord, we look forward to what you have for us today. We look forward to your blessing. We look forward to your anointing. We look forward to the visitation of your spirit, Father God. Lord, and we just take this moment right now and bind Satan in the name of Jesus. From all of his operations, all of his dealings, and we cast him out of this place in Jesus' name. Get out. Get off. You are non-victorious because our Lord Jesus is victorious. Thank you, Lord. We praise you for today. We glorify you and look forward to everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, December 24th, candlelight service. If you haven't experienced this, please come. Please come and join us and worship us together on Christmas Eve. That'll be at 6.30 p.m. on December 24th. Wednesday, no service. Everybody hear that? Wednesday, no service. All right. Following week, New Year's Eve service, Monday, December 31st, 10.30 a.m. Is that right? That doesn't sound right. New Year's Eve service at 10.30 a.m. P.M. It says a.m. 10.30 p.m. Clarification. <laughs> okay. All children for Children's Church, please report to the gym following the announcements. Everybody hear that? Say it again. All kids in Children's Church, please report to the gym following the announcements to prepare for the Christmas program. Parents, please pick your kids up from the classrooms when the service is ended. Refer to your bulletins for other announcements and important things that are happening within the body. And then let's get our minds ready to worship him. Praise God. Amen. Thank you all. Morning. Can everybody please stand? Join me in the reading of the word. I really wasn't sure about this scripture, and then I don't know why I'd question the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and I thought, this really is probably the best Christmas scripture there is. And join me in John 3 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Merry Christmas. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're going to invite the Spirit of God here in just a minute, but let me tell you why we're not having a service on Wednesday night. The reason is because we believe families are important. And we just want you to have a special family night 
after Christmas. Maybe some of you just want to relax. You're probably exhausted, or you may want to visit some other people. So we take that in consideration. That's the why. Okay? Praise God. I'm excited about the fact that Jesus is alive and alive forevermore. He's the same yesterday, today. You finish it forever. That means he's right now the same. He's going to walk up and down these aisles. As we invite the Spirit of God, something can happen in your heart and mine. In fact, I've been believing for that because we all need God. I, I, need, I need Jesus as much as anybody here today. I really do. I need him. Amen? All right, together now. Dear Spirit of God, come upon us with your anointing. Touch our hearts. Touch our lives. Heal us inwardly. Heal damaged emotions. Heal physically. We welcome you. Hallelujah. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can you praise him right now? I praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. I praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. One more thing I want to do. Follow me. Are you ready? The gates of hell, gates of hell. shall not prevail. Shall Against me. The gates of hell shall not prevail against my family. The gates of hell shall not prevail against my church family. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you.
rejoice. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise be to his wonderful, awesome name today. Glory to God. Praise God. I'm going to ask the ushers to come. You may be seated. I know, praise God, I know we have ushers and they'll be here shortly. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord's good. Amen.
We know we have them here. <laughs> We're looking for four wise men. Four wise men to come. Amen. Praise God. It's a busy morning because we got a lot happening. So just uh, hang tight. I am. <laughs> Listen up. <clears throat> Here are some prayer concerns. Uh, Nathan would like us to pray for his daughter, Karen. Uh, she's really ill. We, she needs healing. Let's just ask God to heal her today. Ruby Ferns, I believe, is still in the hospital, and uh, this is Angel's mother, and so we want to lift her up before the Lord. Pray for Stan. He had surgery this past week. Let's just believe God for complete healing. Uh, Tim Boyer is going in for surgery this coming Friday for his shoulder. Let's lift him up in prayer. Donnie Fisher's shoulder is still bothering him. Let's believe God for his healing. Norma, I know she had a stroke, and some of us have talked to her on the phone after that, and she got better and better, but more recently, as we have conversed with her, she sounds like she's had another one, so I, don't, I can't confirm that, but pray for her healing. Also, we want to pray for Mark and Courtney this morning. Uh, they are the proud parents of a new son, Kyson Christian Joel. Williams. So let's lift up uh, Kyson and Courtney and also Daddy there, Mark, okay? I need to pray for Dean and Donna's uh, niece's son. He's had pneumonia. He's got a virus in his respiratory area. We need to really pray that God heals him completely. Amen? And then we got a Christmas Eve service, by the way. This coming Monday evening, 630. Please come out. Let's celebrate Christmas together, and as you come, I want you to know, since we begin at 630, you'll still be able to get home if you have your Christmas for your family Christmas Eve. It'll work out, so praise God for that. Will you stretch your hand in this direction as we lift these needs before the Lord today, and one of these gentlemen here is going to lead us in prayer. Father God. Lord, we just love you, and we praise you so much. And we thank you for this day. We thank you for your son, Jesus. And, Lord, um, that list was so long, Lord, but you know every person on that list, and we know that you love and want to heal every person on that list, Lord. And we just lift them up to you, Father, and we pray for complete healing. And, Lord, uh, Norma always comes to my heart, Lord, and I just pray that you would heal her. Restore her, Father God, and all these other needs, Lord, I pray that you would meet them. Lord, we are grateful and thankful that we can come here today and worship you and give our tithe to you, Father God. And I just pray that you would bless the receiver, bless the giver, Father God. And I pray that this money would be used to further your kingdom, not only here in Brookside, but all around the world. And we ask these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So to honor him. 
Amen. Boy, that was awesome. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Praise God. Hallelujah. That's my second favorite Christmas carol, The Little Drummer Boy. Praise God for that. Well, this morning, as you look up on the platform, you know something is happening or about to happen. Let me just tell you something. Many years ago, when we first leased the building here, we didn't own it yet. They asked me, the owners did, because they wanted to accommodate us as a church. How do you want the platform to be? I said, I want it wall to wall because I believe part of the vision includes theater and drama. And we had it for a while, but then there was an interruption. But today, I want you to know it's happening again. Can you say amen? All right. Three trees presented by the drama team that fits in with the season. Amen. Just, we just need a few more minutes to get everything set up. Okay, children, let's sing our songs. And if you do a really good job, I'll tell you a Christmas story. Okay?
does a wonderful job. Now I'm going to tell you the story. This story is titled, The Tale of the Three Trees. Well, it is in a way. This story happened a long, long time ago in a forest far, far away. But this wasn't just any forest because the trees in this forest can talk. run by last night. Mm. I certainly did. He even stopped to say hello, and then he went out watering the rest of the trees. Well, at least it was the rest of the trees that got watered. I got a deposit left. <laughs> hey, stop. I had my annual ring checkup last week with Dr. Wood. Oh, how'd that go? He told me I needed a root canal. <laughs> did you see Miss Hatchet there, Nurse Hatchet? Uh, unfortunately, she was there. Now I'm limbless. Morning, Tree. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Every tree in the forest is telling a story, inviting the whole world to hear. Through summer and winter, they tell of the glorious seasons and changes and years. They dance in the rain, each one so different, yet each one the same. Every tree in the forest is part of the chorus, listen and you will hear. I just love living in the forest. What a great day to be a tree. Ah, oh, come on now, you know that we have roots here, don't have much choice. Well, I don't mean to be sappy, but I love living in the forest. <laughs> I like it here, but I just want to branch out. Do you know? See the word. I have big dreams. Every tree in the forest is telling a story, inviting a whole world to hear. Through summer and winter, they tell of the glorious seasons and changes in years. They play in the sun. They dance in the rain, each one so different, yet each one the same. Every tree in the forest is part of the chorus, listen and you will hear. Just what we need, a tree with a dream. Next you'll be saying you want to leave. <coughs> I just want to do something new, you know what I mean? Nope, I'm stumped. Sometimes you really can't see <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you really can't see past the forest for the trees. Every tree in the forest is telling a story, inviting the whole world to hear. Through summer and winter, they tell of the glorious seasons and changes in years. They play in the sun, they dance in the rain. Each one so different, yet each one the same. Every tree in the forest is part of the forest. Listen and you will hear. Every tree in the forest is part of the chorus. Listen and you will hear. Listen and you will hear. A wiser tree than me once said, Keep thy hopes and dreams well fed. You need not fear the new pursuits if you grow from your own roots. Yo, Woodsworth, lighten up a bit. <sighs> you drive us up a tree when you talk like that. Well, she did get one thing right. It's great to be a tree. What in the world don't we have in the forest? Can't imagine why we would ever want to leave. 
believe life in the city would probably bore us. Who wouldn't want to be me? share it with the rest of us. Well, I was just thinking. Oh, go ahead. Bark it out. Or are you afraid we're all going to turn green with envy? Happy is the tree, and happy he alone who can call today his own. The tree who's secure enough to say, tomorrow do your worst, for I have lived today. There she goes again, <laughs> trying to spruce things up, right, Annabelle? No. I know what she's saying. It's okay to have a dream. You know, something you're willing to risk life and limb for. Someday I'll leave all this forest behind I can't wait to see where the journey will lead I have a dream I have a dream I have a dream Someday I will hold Treasures that sparkle like diamonds and gold And I'll hold more riches than you I have a dream, I have a dream. Sometimes I wish upon a star, sometimes the waiting seems so hard. Sometimes I wonder if maybe it could be I'm reaching way too far. One day you will hold great and valuable treasures. 
Oh, Annabelle, that's so exciting. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> How about you, Maple? Certainly a fine tree like you has a better dream than that. So whatever happened to blooming where you're planted? Is it just me or does everyone with a dream just want to get out of this neck of the woods? <coughs> Doesn't anyone want to stick around? I have the greatest dream of all. I just want to stay here in the forest forever. What could be better than standing on this hill and pointing people towards God? Yes. <coughs> I have a dream that I'll grow up so high that when people pass, they will look to the sky and realize there's something that's greater than me. I have a dream. I have a dream. Sometimes I wish upon a star. Sometimes the waiting seems Sometimes I wonder, and maybe it could be I'm reaching way too far. I have a dream that I'm longing to see. If there's a place for somebody like me, I'll be the luckiest dream. I knew, if only I knew. Someday my dream will come true. The woodcutter is coming. The woodcutter is coming. How 
much wood for the woodcutter cut if the woodcutter could cut wood? How much wood for the woodcutter cut if the woodcutter could cut wood? Yeah. How much wood for the woodcutter cut if the woodcutter could cut wood? Yeah. going to take today. You know I'm already just an old stump. May I recommend the true fruit tree over there? No, not me. I've always hoped to live to a ripe old age. Well, you know, I always had my eyes on that one way up there. Many years went by, and things didn't turn out just like the three trees had imagined. <laughs> Annabelle, Annabelle ended up in an old barn. I have to tell you, holding feed for animals is a long, long way from holding riches. <coughs> and Maple, when she found herself in the shipyard, she must have thought her dreams had all come true. But she didn't become a minor ship. Instead, she became a simple boat that would never be used for more than carrying fishermen out to sea. It seemed she would never sail with powerful men in the way she had dreamed. And Gabrielle, mm. poor Gabrielle, she never wanted to leave the forest. She only dreamt of growing taller and taller and pointing people towards God. Now she waits alone in the dark, forgotten corner of the lumber yard. All three trees fail to realize that no matter how big we dream, 
God sees an even bigger picture. The hardest part for all of us is in the waiting. You know, it's almost like when you can't see the forest for the trees. fulfilled, so down through history, mankind had waited with wonder to see how God's plan for salvation would be revealed. And she brought forth her firstborn son and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn. That night, I knew my dream had come true. I held the greatest treasure of all. That baby grew into a man. One day, he found himself in the middle of a storm aboard a small shipping ve fishing vessel. And he arose, and he rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace, 
be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And I thought to myself, what a great and powerful man this must be that, that even the wind and the waves obey him. And that's when I realized that God had chosen me to carry the greatest of the kingdom on. Not long after that, Jesus faced another storm, one that he chose not to silence. He was accused and called guilty. He was betrayed and beaten. Then soldiers took his clothes and led him through the streets to a hill, to a hill where they nailed him to a tree. A tree that dreamed of standing tall and pointing people towards God. of a manger that grew from a tiny seed, a ship on the Sea of Galilee, and the cross that was raised at Calvary. That's what we plant when we plant a tree. Ah, uh, you know, it's enough of this poetry. Nobody even asked me about my dream. I wanted to go out on a limb and be a tree house. <laughs> Let it go, 
close, Dom. You're not near as funny as you think you are. <laughs> oh, go ahead and take it up with my branch manager if you want to. <laughs> I think it's time we pack up his chunk and get him out of here. <laughs> oh, come on. Leave me alone. Get it? Leaf? Get it? Hey, we're not out of the woods yet. So let's have all the children from Children's Church Come on up, and we'll sing that one last song again. Praise God. <clears throat> Wasn't that awesome? Oh, I tell you. My hopes and dreams have been realized today. It's been part of the vision for years, as I mentioned early on. I'd just like to uh, share with you briefly, because they asked me to do that. I want you to think for just for a moment about putting yourself in place of the three trees. Do you have a dream? Has God given you a dream? Maybe it's taken a long time for that dream to come to pass. I just want to encourage you today that God is in the dream and he's in you. 
He wants to bring it to pass. Some people that I've talked to over the years, and especially those who are on their bed and they're dying in the hospital, often they've said to me, they said, Pastor, I know I'm ready to go home to be with the Lord. I have Jesus in my heart. But I feel like I never really did or accomplished what God wanted me to accomplish. I've had others tell me that while they may be in their 20s or 30s, they haven't gone home and they're not going home, but they still don't know what God wants them to be. Some in their 40s. I'm here to tell you that way back in eternity past, God foresaw that you were going to invite Jesus in your heart and your life. And so he also decided on a plan. It would have purpose, something for you to accomplish. I think what happens to us so often is that we graduate from high school, some of us go to college, there are thousands of dollars spent to prepare for some vocation or occupation, and we never really say to God, what do you want me to do in life? And I'm not saying that you can't pursue something that God's put in your heart that would be in the marketplace or the secular world. But in all of that, he's got some purpose for you to accomplish. You know, I got saved, and when I got saved and finally gave my life to God, I would sit on the back row, and I said, I'm content. I'm going to do what God wants me to do back there, okay? I did go out on the streets and witness some. I paid my tithes. But believe me, one thing I never wanted to be was a preacher or a pastor. That's the last thing in the world I ever wanted to be. When I was growing up, I remember as a boy, I wanted to be a fireman. And then later on, I wanted to be a soldier. And then even after that, I wanted to be a coach. Those are the things that I really wanted in life. But yet, way back in eternity past, God had mapped out something he wanted me to pursue, which would be his divine purpose for my life. And I remember I went to a camp meeting on a Saturday night after I'd worked all day in a factory. And that night when I went to the altar, after the invitation was given, the Spirit of God came upon me. I fell. I, I was slain in the Spirit. And I saw a vision. I saw the whole earth filled with grain, and it was rotating. And then I heard the words of Jesus. He said to me, I have called you. Well, can I tell you the honest truth? I was scared to death. Called me? I didn't think he would ever call me to do anything. But you know what? I wanted even after I got called, first of all, to be an evangelist. You say, well, pastor, you could have never been an evangelist. I've done street evangelism on the foreign field. I have preached under the, tent as a, uh, under the tents as an evangelist. And God's used me that way. Then I said, I want to be a prophet. That's what I really want to be. I want to be, I want to really be a prophet. But you know what? God said, that isn't your calling. Your calling is to be a pastor. In other words, that's the tree you're to be, okay? And I thought, oh, wow. So I became one because he called me to be a pastor after I began to understand more clearly what the dream was, the God-given dream. You see, sometimes we have a dream, but we want to pursue it in our own way. Guess what? As a pastor, I became a fireman because pastors put out fires. I became a soldier. Thank God for that. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. But you know, beyond that, I'm a coach. I'm coaching people towards maturity. This is what God's doing in my life. In this tremendous drama, and I'm so proud of everyone that participated, I want you to know that the one tree, she wanted to be that treasure, tre treasure chest, and she became a feeding trough. But guess what? She held Jesus, did she not? They placed Jesus in that feeding trough. How wonderful to have the gifts 
In fact, in scripture it says it's the gift that you can't explain. It's so wonderful. It's so awesome. And then the other tree that wanted to be a mighty sailing ship became a boat on the Sea of Galilee to carry the King of Kings. Can you say amen? And then that one tree that wanted to stand so tall and point everybody up to look at God. Guess what happened? It was cut down, but then it was put up and it held the King of Kings. Did it not? It held Jesus Christ. And he hung there on the cross for you and me. And the cross is so important because that was the eternal cross of God in the mind of God. Now it became the historical cross. And now you and I not only benefit by believing that Jesus died for us and for our sins, but also because the Apostle Paul was so anointed of God and inspired by God that he showed us that not only did Jesus die, but we died with him. So we don't have to be ruled by the old nature, the Adamic nature. Isn't that wonderful when you think about it? What about you today? Have you ever just said to God, I want to be what you want me to be? If you already have a vocation, you might still remain in that, but you will become a light. You will become an individual that will be a living epistle. You will realize that you're on earth not only to be involved in that vocation or that occupation, but you're there to be light and salt to a world that's weary. Today I want you to know, outside of these walls, People are not really happy about, Christ, about Christmas. A little over 50%, I think they said 53% say they're happy about Christmas. Oh, I want you to know God will give you purpose, a divine purpose in life. Amen? Now back to that question. You need to place yourself in the place of these three trees. Are you really a person that knows the purpose of God and why you exist on this earth. Will you stand? Let's have an honesty check. Will you close your eyes? How many can lift your hand and say, I really know what the purpose of God is for my life. Will you raise your hand if you're all over here? You know that purpose? All right. No one looking around. Put your hands out. How many today could say, you know, Pastor, finally something's clicked in me. I believe the Spirit's got hold of me. I believe the hound of heaven has got hold of me. <laughs> How many could lift your hand and say today, Pastor, I just want you to know that I realize I have a purpose in life that's bigger than the secular world and anything else, and I would like to surrender to that. I've had my own ideas and thoughts what that would be. Would you lift your hand up all over this audience? All right, I see those hands. Now, before I go any further, I want you to step out. Right now, in Jesus' name, step out. Don't hesitate. Come and seek the face of God. Come right up here. I need these uh, poinsettias eyes are in the way, but don't worry about it. If they fall off, who cares? We just want you to get through to God, okay? Now, the next question is, how many of you out there that raised your hand? Okay, you raised your hand and you say, I know what God wants me to do. How many of you, in all honesty now, could raise your hand and say, Pastor, I am discouraged about my dream. It hasn't happened yet. Will you lift your hand up? I see a hand here. There's some more hands. All right, I'm going to ask you to do something else, okay? In the name of Jesus, will you come on out in the aisles and get up here and talk to God? Because he wants you to know that he's with you, that he's going to help you, he's going to strengthen you. Guess what? We know that Jeremiah 29, 11 talks about how 
that God really, really thinks about us. Do you know today that God's thinking about you right at this very moment? You say, oh, no, he's got too much to do. Take care of the universe. There's something about God that's as though you're the only one that exists on earth right now. He's thinking about you. And you know, he really wants to give you something that is awesome. He doesn't want to give you evil. He wants to give you good. Can you say amen? And so he wants to bring you through to the other side so that you realize your vision. Will you come if you're there and you haven't come yet? Will you step out in the name of Jesus? Amen. All right. We got some people up here. I'm going to ask that our elders come. I'm going to ask that our pastors come. I'm going to ask that ministers come. I'm going to ask that you come and lay hands on people up here because we got some who do not know what God wants them to do, and they've come up here for that very purpose. We have others who have come up and they say, Oh my, it's been too long. It just seems like a, it's never going to happen. But God says, hold tight, it will. Can you say amen? Now you out there, you could give them a good Christmas gift by just raising your hand in this direction and praying for them, okay? That is the most wonderful gift that you could ever give the people today. Amen? All right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord, touch her by your power, by your spirit, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.